Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' Crackin' It's D, about to react to this vid by YT, Wake Em Up. It's titled, Celebrities Are Going Broke, The Downfall of the Music Industry. I have heard this narrative circulating for a cool minute now. People are saying that the music is the music industry isn't what it used to be, and they're no longer paying these artists uh, like that, and a lot of them are just really, really broke. They're very famous, and you think they got a lot of money just because they're famous, which is not the case. Just because you see somebody all the time or, you know, you see them with this expensive stuff on, that does not mean they actually have money. So, yeah, I guess we're about to get some insight. Let's watch. I wrote a record for Usher. Who's this? The song came out. Let's say at the time the song streamed 70 million streams. If I own 20% of the song or 25% of the song and it did 70 million streams and it's $3,000 per million stream so it's 3,000 times 70. Right, right. So 210,000. Spotify collects their streams and then they pay the publishers. There's a fixed percentage on the publishing side based on the relationship between Spotify and the music publishers. So that $210,000 that that song made had to be bust down. My take on that 210, my take home was probably $1,500. Oh, my and God. I, and I went, this is how the math worked. It was this wow. simple. Look, it was this simple. That's terrible. If I'd have put that song out myself and only had 3 million streams, I'd have made $10,000. So I stopped giving records to artists. I'm like, I can give you this record and you could fail and I can get a percentage of your failure or I could take 100% of my failure and I could take that to the bank. Right. What was the biggest shock for either of you guys when you got to the industry? Half the industry is broke. Mm. Maybe you said this too. And that shocked me. That, that's I would good say, one. That's a good one. Celebrities, I would be around celebrities, rappers, no offense, mm -hmm. but a bunch of them that's like wearing all the big jewelry or on Instagram, it's all a facade. And that's when it was like, yeah. for me, I was like, wow, okay, I can breathe. Yeah. Because I don't need to keep up with the Joneses. Right, right, because right. Because y'all ain't even keeping up with the Joneses yourself. Ooh, it's rentals. Okay. It's rentals. It's rentals. It's like Miami. I'm, or like I'm, whenever I'm, they rent the cars and drive around or whatever and then like return them. Yes. Yeah. The Lambos? Yeah, it's, all the, it's all the Lambos, yeah. Or even with jewelry. I think I didn't yeah. realize a lot of that was that like, oh, they buy these pieces to wear in a music video or and in a carpet, them and they take them back to the jeweler. Because yeah. They're actual pieces mm -hmm. when it comes to rapping hip hop culture. That's very true. Because even when I worked in hip hop, it was interesting mm -hmm. just to see and hear stuff. Like, not, and again, I'm not trying to put anybody on blast or whatever. Okay, I, can, I can name people if you wanted me to, but correct. Like, you never know. But that's the thing is, like, at the end of the day, you I worked in hip hop. What does that mean? You cannot look at somebody. <laughs> what was your, what was your job role? Never. Over any of this. Very so, big. let me just tell you something. A record deal is nothing more than a line of credit. It's nothing more than a line of credit. You can go get one yourself. People think when they yeah, make it to the you gotta pay label back. status, when they get signed, that they made it to the big leagues. For a musician oh, a going and getting signed, it's like video. going to the NBA or the NFL or the MLB or the NHL. It's like going pro. You know what I'm saying? That was the first time somebody's put me on game when, when it comes to the entertainment business. You know, I wrote raps, I wrote verses, I wrote songs for over a decade and had never earned a penny. And of course, how long, how long you wrote for? Over a decade. So today, Redan has tweeted that about 50 artists and label execs were laid off from Atlantic Records. And I can't even lie, I kind of saw this coming. Now, I'm only speaking from the artist's perspective when I say that artists got to stop chasing record deals. It is no longer valuable. And it's especially no longer valuable when you have tools like TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, social yeah, media. As an artist, sense. if you're using these platforms to produce content rather than consume it, you can build your own brand. You are in an age where the labels are going to have to come to you. We don't live in an age where you make demo tapes and send them off and go to talent shows anymore. That's the 90s, my boy. This the new age. Also, understand that you're competing with people like Kasanak, Drewskis, The Speeds. These are the people that can command attention. The streamers are the new movie stars. So the best thing an artist can do is become your own brand. So coming out and just pushing your music, yeah, that's fine. You know, and it really only works if you're super, super, super talented or if you have a super huge team behind you. But if you don't, the internet is your best friend. Yo, so listen, we know it's a lot of layoffs going on all across the job market, but I never seen in the history of my existence a label drop so many different artists. If you're not getting yeah, it touring, do, yeah. or if you're not getting it through other other means, mm -hmm. this music yeah. shit is a rap. All of your, all I, I'm saying, all of the musicians are broke. Oh, all of them? Relatively, 
Relative. <laughs> Relative to what you bring in. Now, I yes. do think that there is um, plenty of ways to make money as independence. Low overhead, it's not expensive to make these albums, you're making them at home or wherever, and you're building a reasonable fan base, and you're selling physical and merch. They're, not everyone is broke broke, but in terms of like the superstar thing, I agree with you. But like you said, so what you're bringing in, what you get in, and my yeah, my conversation is not really about yeah. it's, a it's not really about independent acts. Yeah, okay. My my conversation is about what's going on in the majors. They tricking y'all with the words in these contracts. They tricking y'all into thinking that y'all are real partners. They tricking y'all with the hey, you own your stuff. The, mm -hmm. the recent layoffs tell me that. Mm -hmm. You don't see all these people getting laid off? They yeah. all over. They let us like yeah. 20 percent right? You know, everywhere. 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 everywhere, 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 media too, everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, look, and look, and to me, um, based on what you're saying, that went to our AR conversation. Mm -hmm. The second that we can have six people instead of sixty, mm -hmm. y'all gone. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely not a drill. Yes. Atlantic slash Warner is planning to fire and let go over a hundred oh, so people. Recent. I'm sorry, one hundred and fifty. Actually, 170. And not only is this super unfortunate for the employees that are affected, I do see optimism for them, but I also want to share my small itty bitty critique or commentary, if you will. I don't want anybody coming after me. But basically, the company is no. restructuring, and so many people are going to be affected by this restructuring. We kind of already knew this in the beginning of this year when Universal did their mass layoffs, so all the other tech companies did their mass layoffs. But what I find really interesting, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard this morning that they are restructuring Atlantic into like a distribution company, which in theory, I guess it makes sense. But if they honestly think that's the model that's going to make them financially sustainable, they're inaccurate and wrong. My humble opinion. Now for the artists and young executives that are affected, although it fucking sucks to get fired or lose a team member, please use this as fuel. Sure, you can work at another label, sure. But use the internet to your advantage and build your own shit. There was a time where I thought that everybody had money except me. I would see motherfuckers do these music video shoots and motherfuckers got chains and cars and all type of shit. And I'm in a one bedroom apartment with four motherfuckers. So there was a time where I was really thinking, bro, why do everybody got money and I don't got no money? Is it because I'm independent? Now, the truth is everybody didn't have no money. Mm. But, you know, they don't tell you that because the label's job is to make it look like you got some money. We'll give you the car, we're going to give you the cosigns, we're going to put you in the studio with this motherfucker, we're going to have cameras following you around everywhere you go. I was thinking, like, damn, everybody getting money but me, but nah, everybody looked like they got money, right. you, know I mean? yeah. you know what I'm saying? I got caught up in the layoffs, but it was more of a layoff the than the image. Layoffs, okay? okay. Because I knew this was coming. For you or you knew it was coming, period? Both. I knew it was coming for me. Last year around this time, I was having issues with my contract, and that's when I was like, something's wrong. Yep. And I was like, let me start setting up my plan A. I've always had a plan A if mm -hmm. I had a job. And the plan A was whatever I was hustling for, you know what I'm saying? So if I had a job, if I was a custodian, I was doing something else on the side, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. So it was never one thing that I had all my eyes in, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So with, with the music business, no different. I have never done every single thing the right way the first time. I, I'm not perfect or none of that. I've had some ups and downs, and I've had more victories than losses. Google fired its entire YouTube music team while the employees were in the middle of testifying before the Austin City Council. A group of less than 50 employees were testifying about their unionization efforts when they were informed of their sudden termination. They just laid us all off. Oh. Yeah. They, they just laid us all off. You know what? I, side note. I just think it's so interesting <laughs> that people are always saying, like, oh, what are you going to do outside of social media? Or what are you going to do after? Or, you know, because social media isn't forever. The stuff isn't forever. These jobs <laughs> y'all have are not, are not forever either. Like, they could literally decide to lay you off at the drop of a hat and it'll just be a complete shock to you. You'll be like, wait, what? I've, I've done so well in my position. I've been with this company for years. They, they, don't, they don't care about you. None of these companies care about you. So over the years being on YouTube, it's coming up on, I want to say, ooh, I'm old. Eight years <laughs> that I've been on YouTube. What is this? No, I started in 2016. Bro, it's about to be nine years. I've known this for... N so, I... <laughs> wow. This is about to be 2025. Where is time going? Anyway, um, my entire YouTube career, I've, I've heard people say this to me. They've always... Whenever I have a Q&A or whatever, 
I need to do another Q&A uh, soon. But people always like, what do you plan to do? Like, this isn't going to, this isn't going to last that long. Like, what are you going to, and it's like, <laughs> these jobs don't last long. And, and, and I'm not saying you should prepare because I, trust me, I, I prepare uh, for whatever. Um, but I just find it interesting that people think these jobs are, are permanent and they're just not. Yeah. We just own, I guess we just own. Our jobs are ended today, effective immediately. Last year, the YouTube music team voted to unionize under the Alphabet Workers Union, seeking better pay, benefits, and a flexible return to office policy. However, Google refused to negotiate, arguing that because the employees are contractors, their contractor Cognizant is responsible for bargaining. But the National Labor Relations Board ruled that Google and Cognizant are joint employers of the YouTube music team. And the NLRB said that Google's refusal to bargain with the YouTube music workers is illegal. Still, in a statement to Fortune, a spokesperson for Google claims the Austin-based workers are not Google employees. <laughs> Cognizant is responsible for them. Google also denied that it fired the workers, saying this was a routine end of contract that was agreed on with Cognizant. But the workers say the termination was a surprise and many it's feel as if they could lose their homes due to the sudden and unexpected so layoff. Even you two, music doing layoffs. You need to know. I'm really starting to think that the music industry and the celebs that are in it have been fooling us all this oh, time. Just to think that girl. I do not think any of them have money at all. I hope they I play mean, DDG's clip tour. because he said that when he um, got into the music industry, he was like, wow, I didn't realize that these these rappers are so broke. <laughs> he said, I'm coming into this industry and although I'm not even popping like that, I'm richer than most of these people that I'm around. And I'm like, wait, y'all don't even actually have money. Like, I got hell of money from youtube still getting hell of money from youtube like i'm making more than so many of y'all so i thought that was really interesting when he talked about that so maybe they'll include it shit and there's a good reason for that people like gucci and christian dior and louis vuitton they are the rolex and the bentley's of the fashion industry so they do not need a celebrity uh, Ooh, to showcase me. their latest design to sell it they don't so when you see these um, rappers and singers and stuff in the music industry showing their clothes and their houses and all that stuff, I really think they're getting all that stuff on credit. In the music industry, it's like, you work for me, we give you all these gifts. Why do you think so many people are in some real fucked up contracts right now? And also, in our community, we mm -hmm. always talk about if we had millions mm -hmm. of dollars, how we would buy up the blog, mm -hmm. how we would help our people and stuff. And you don't see them doing that. And people think it's because they're selfish. No, I think it's because they are cash poor and they and really they cannot <laughs> help you. It brings me to this. The music industry is very successful in creating images into demeaning us in every single way. And they profit and make lots of money off of that. And we buy into that every time we support them. But now she's spending back. But it really I want to hear her celebrities talk about it, though. Now, I don't know who this is. Feel this way for money. Nobody spend money like that. No shade there. Ain't no money in the music industry. And I know people might get mad at you, but I'm just saying, y'all know, it's a lot of things that we used to do. It ain't no money. And you know, it's a tapped out. They're trying to figure out how to make money off of streams. When Snoop put a post up, said, man, I sold a billion streams. I only made this little money. Where the millions at? We knew where I went from because we had tangible goods. And that's why I got into the product game. We could actually have tangible goods. I told people all the time, product outweighs talent. Probably gonna be around when we're not here. Michael Jordan is still successful because of the shoes, not because him shooting balls into the hoop. That been old. Especially if you're signed to a label, you can't control your release dates, yeah. when things get released. Also, musicians don't make a lot of money in the mm. music industry. That's why you see a lot of people, they have brand deals and brand sponsorships. That's where the coin comes from in touring. But yeah. like music itself, you're actually losing money. I learned this because I would produce Sis and I's records. Mm -hmm. Producers outside will get paid a huge lump sum, but because I would produce Sis and I's records, I couldn't get paid because I was a producer within the group. I don't know if it changed within Grammys, but you know, like how they have producer of the year. I learned it from Imogene Heat because, mm -hmm. you know, she produces a lot of her stuff. So does Grime, so does Bjork. They couldn't be contenders for producer of the year because they were the ones producing their own bodies of work and not for others. And notice how those are just the women I named. They signed you three million dollars. This walk, uh, not Cardi. Oh, maybe Cardi too. <laughs> this is why Rihanna don't want to put out no music. She's just like, why would I do that? I'm making way more money doing this other shit, this Fenty shit. And like, if I do want to make money from my music, I'll have to tour. I don't want to do that. I want to take care of my kids. 
Like, I'm good. So I don't think she's ever going to release another album, to be honest. And yeah, Cardi probably is in that same boat as well. I mean, she has admitted that she's uh, afraid as well, of, like criticism and, you know, all the pressure. But on top of that, she makes so much money, like, doing other things. So she's probably like, I'm not even going to make money like that from the music itself. Like, what's the point? Five albums. But your album term might say you can't drop an album. I think she for owes that to her months. label, though. So we can do the math. I don't know. That's going to be years. That's years. Four years. Four or five years. Maybe six years. Because the average artist ain't just going to drop no album exactly on the nine months. So right. it's still going to be a stretch. You're creating. And then while they're time, while it's going on, they still got to spend the money into you. So it's doubling down. So it's like most artists, you don't see no check from the label, but the one that you sign. Rap ain't where it used to be. Sales ain't selling no more. Fuck it. Like, Motherfuckers is not buying tickets like that no more to come to them concerts. Like, you feel me? The economy fucked up. Like, what? And these people want you to hold music? This shit fucked up out here. I do rap. I do rap. If you go on the DSPs like Apple Music, Spotify, all of those places, and you look at, and you look at where my where my projects is uh, listed under, like what genre they listed under, they all listed under hip, hip hop and rap. Yeah, I got yeah, I got a, I got a solid fan base, and that's the thing too. Like, I don't lie, y'all. Like, that's another thing I tell y'all. Like, the economy, the economy is so fucked up that like it's so many people going out on tour in October. I gotta see if I'm in, I'm even able to go out on tour in October. Like, you feel me? Or whenever we supposed to go out? Like, I gotta I gotta see because this shit fucked up out here. Like, everybody don't got it right now. You heard? Everybody don't got it. The world fucked up. People don't got it. I wanna be able to. You know what I mean? Like, but y'all got my word. Like, when I do go out on tour, I'm going to put my tickets as low as I can for y'all. That way it's fair for y'all. It's fair for me. You know, it's fair for everybody that got it. I'm going to put my tickets as low as I can for y'all because I, I know how the economy is. Like, shit ain't the best right now. Everybody don't got it. Listen, if you do a quick Google search, you will see most musicians that were supposed to go out on tour had to cancel their tour. Shout out to this man who put up this vid. I will uh, put his original video down in the description below if you want to hear his thoughts. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely what's occurring right now. These celebrities are struggling for sure unless they got the brand deals and sponsors and you know they have products that they're selling. If they're just dependent on music though, they're not really making money like that. So if they're not touring like that, they they definitely are not getting what you think they're getting. Because people just assume that, oh, you're rich because you're a celebrity. That's just not, that's not the case. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!